So we know US-China relations are getting from bad to worse and every time a crack happens, the world economy is slipping closer into chaos. And I think we really need to understand how globalization took off. It was a product of the United States and China working together and they helped spread prosperity to the world. And ever since China joined the World Trade Organization, they became the world's factory and started exporting cheap goods and cheap labor, right? The Chinese economy effectively exported deflation. And the US became the largest consumer, had access to China's market, and their economy grew. But most importantly, the US dollar greatly increased in power too. America exported tons of dollars and flooded the world with liquidity to facilitate trade. And let's also not forget how China recycled a ton of their dollars back into US treasuries, allowing the United States to grow faster with cheaper money. But what we are seeing today is the decoupling of the United States and China. They are no longer on great terms and we have to prepare for a big fallout if they break away. Now, just recently, we have Anthony Blinken warning China not to supply Russia with weapons or face consequences and Wang Yi, the Chinese diplomat, clapped back, telling the United States to face up to and resolve the damage done by the spy balloon incident. So things aren't looking good. If China and the United States decouple, we could see a world getting split into two factions and the world economy will have to adjust. And that will mean a lot of opportunities and a lot of hidden dangers going forward to investors, right? And we're going to understand these five economic fallouts that are already happening because of the China-US meltdown. Now, the first crisis we'll face is a world of persistent inflation. And I think we are beginning to realize that inflation is not going to come down fast. Even after the BLS changed the way they calculated the CPI, inflation is still at 6.4% and core inflation has actually risen. It has been almost two years since inflation has gone above 5% and we can kiss the Fed's target of 2% goodbye. It won't happen anytime soon. And the problem with decoupling is how both the US and China are going to push the world into a simultaneous state of higher inflation and higher interest rates at the same time, right? And we can see how over the past two decades, Inflation and interest rates fell over time and this allowed the economy to grow much faster. People had cash to spend at the end of the month and companies could borrow tons of money to expand. But what is happening is a total reverse where credit crunch is happening and people are buying less stuff. So even if we aren't heading to a recession, we are entering into a period of stagnation. And this is the problem if the US-China relations melt down. The United States is planning to slap capital controls on China and that is on top of the technology sanctions and the tariff trades Donald Trump imposed on them back in 2019. So China is going to get less money from the United States to grow, but China is also throwing a counter punch. They are aggressively dumping US treasuries like no tomorrow. We can see that since the start of the year, China's holdings of US bonds have dropped from over a trillion dollars down to just $867 billion. And this isn't good news for the United States either. This is going to keep bond yields elevated in the US, especially when the Federal Reserve is also spiking up their own interest rates. Now, remember that Powell is still going to hike the Fed funds rate. The hiking cycle isn't over yet. Plus, it's also deleveraging the Fed's assets, their balance sheet, drawing down over $500 billion worth of US bonds since April 2022. So now we have a triple hiking effect on interest rates in the United States and this is going to keep the cost of borrowing high and every day it stays high is another day the economy could slide into a recession. And after China sells their treasuries, where are they allocating the money to? Well, it's going to physical gold. For the first time in many years, we have the Chinese central bank announcing to the world their gold purchases. They bought gold three months in a row, stacking over 77 tons, bringing their reserves well above 2,000 tons. Now, I don't want to spread any conspiracy here, but we have to ask ourselves, why is China telling the world of their accumulation plans, right? Because it's technically a smarter move to keep quiet and keep buying gold in the shadows. You don't want the market to front run you and you just push gold prices higher. And this tells us that China has an agenda and they're either showing the world an alternative to the dollar or they might be backing up their currency with gold sooner or later. And let's go through the first possibility. We know the United States has sanctioned away Russia's central bank reserves, and this is making many countries, especially the ones that don't share Western values, sweat bullets, right? And what China is telling these countries is that, hey, if you're worried about your funds getting sanctioned away, physical gold is an outlet to store your wealth without any counterparty risk. And that's why 2022, we saw record central bank buying 
Even the IMF has written a paper about how the risk of sanctions is pushing countries to add gold to their reserves. So let's understand the role gold could play in the future, right? We could see a sustained demand for gold over the next few years, especially if the West keeps wrapping up their sanctions, it's only going to continue. And it won't be surprising if gold returns as a unit of trade. It could revert back to the good old days where barrels of oil were traded for an ounce of gold. Now, the second possibility is a gold back currency. Now, this is speculation and nothing is concrete yet. But there have been reports of the BRICS block thinking of developing a common currency. And it would make sense for gold to back the new currency to add credibility. Remember that back in 1944, back to the Bretton Woods Agreement, the dollar was backed by gold in its inception as the reserve currency. So history might replay itself again. Gold could be used again to lend credibility to the yuan. But either way, we'll be moving into a world where the dollar loses relevance and gold gains more ground as a serious store of value. And this move away from dollars is being pushed to the Middle East by China as well. And let's quickly rewind back to December last year when President Xi met with MBS in Riyadh and the reception was far grander than the fist bump Biden got. And we could see a tangible shift by the Saudis away from America and towards China. Now, I have to state that the kingdom has not officially sold oil for the Chinese yuan. It has not happened yet. The Saudis, they are still sitting on the sidelines seeing how things play out. They are watching the oil price cap play out. They are watching the expansion of BRICS and the conflict happening between Russia and Ukraine. But let's focus on the most important part of the meeting. We have President Xi making proposals to the Gulf states to settle their energy sales using the Chinese yuan over the next few years. And I cannot overstate how much of a black swan event this will be if it really happens because it will open the floodgates to all sorts of de-dollarization action. Saudi Arabia is already starting to invest more into commodity production, especially mining firms. The Saudi Wealth Fund is putting its money to iron ore, copper, nickel and lithium mines, diversifying away from traditional instruments like treasuries. And if China did get their way, this will boost the yuan trade and weaken the dollar's hegemony, right? Now, this doesn't mean that the dollar will collapse, it won't vanish, but there will be less money flowing to US bonds because fewer trades will be done in the reserve currency. And let's remember that China is the biggest importer of Saudi crude and their top trading partner, so there is incredible leverage here, especially when the kingdom is also trying to diversify more into Asia. So we have to pay attention to the Middle East. They hold the key if the dollar retains hegemony for the foreseeable future or if the dollarization accelerates. But let's address the elephant in the room, and yes, it's about that balloon. It might seem silly to dedicate an entire section to that weather balloon or spy balloon, but hear me out, right? Now, first was the shooting down of the balloon with the F-22 fighter jets with a missile. Then came the shooting down of another balloon with a $400,000 missile in Canadian airspace. And what I want us to focus on is the war industry and how the military industrial complex is going to grow again. Now, the Chinese balloon incident and the weapons being sent to Ukraine tells us that a new arms race has already begun. America and their allies, they're going to rearm and the fear of China is already starting to build. Now, just a few weeks ago, we had the American four-star general Mike Minahan predicting a war with China by 2025. And this is just adding tensions and fuel to the fire, wrapping up defense spending for both sides, right? So guys, the defense industry is booming. If we look at the defense ETF ITA, it has outperformed the S&P 500 over the past 12 months. And this is a collection of American defense contractors. And remember that this growth is during a period of high interest rates, telling us that defense spending is rather inelastic. If you need to spend, you gotta spend. And just in 2021 alone, we can see tens of billions of dollars flowing into companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Raytheon. And this spending is only gonna go up. For 2023, the proposed defense spending has been confirmed to hit over $810 billion. And that is an increase of $34 billion from 2022, the majority of which will go to defense contractors. And if China-US relations continue to nosedive, we're going to see defense spending ramp up, not just in the US, but the entire of NATO as well. This is a rearmament of the entire world, guys. Plus, if you didn't know yet, NATO buys a ton of arms from the United States in 2022, Sales of military weapons between the US and foreign governments have reached a staggering $52 billion. And because Russia is under heavy sanctions, 
their loss business is being taken up by American contractors as well. And even Japan is scrambling to be armed by 2027. They want to double their military budget to 10 trillion yen or 2% of their GDP. And where do you think those weapons are going to come from again? It will likely be from American companies. But China's not going to stay still. They are taking action. They know the globalization is already here and they are making moves to secure their own economy. So let's sit back and think about what China really needs to keep growing. They need a ton of commodities and raw materials. And if the world keeps breaking apart, China will likely move to stockpile even more commodities, right? We are talking about rare earths, base metals and wheat. They are going to buy it all up because there's always the fear of sanctions hitting them. And one big commodity China is hoarding is copper. In an interesting report from Reuters, China is still the biggest driver of copper demand. They stockpile over 3.6 million tons of copper in 2022. And we can see an incredibly high demand for copper over the last decade because China's economy is still growing despite the property crisis and the lockdowns, they are still importing tons of copper. And this stockpiling also spills over into food, especially wheat and grain. It is estimated that a record 65% of the world's corn and 53% of wheat will be held in China by 2023. And this is very concerning because all this stockpiling is going to push up global food prices and keep commodity prices higher than usual. Now, just imagine if China and the United States continues to break away, we could see a buying spree of commodities across the board from China. And in fact, if the yuan appreciates against the dollar, we could see China devalue their currency by hoarding commodities instead of US treasuries. They will sell their yuan for US dollars and then use the green back to buy up more commodities from the rest of the world. Because it's not about speculation or profits for China, it's about national security and protecting themselves from sanctions. They will buy gold to protect their reserves, they will hoard wheat for their food security and stockpile copper to fuel their growth. So regardless if you're pro-America or pro-China, this breakaway has serious consequences. Commodity prices could stay high for much longer. Inflation, especially for food, energy and shelter, won't be coming down as fast as the Federal Reserve hopes. And I think there's going to be a tremendous opportunity for investors if US-China relations actually get worse and if a deep coupling happens, right? We just need to know how to position ourselves. So here's how I'm playing this, guys. There's no guarantee which superpower will come out ahead because both sides, they have tremendous advantages, right? China, they have secured cheap energy from Russia and they are cutting away their dependence on the US dollar system. So China is still going to grow despite the decoupling and despite the sanctions. And here's the big one. If Saudi Arabia joins BRICS and starts to use the Yuan for their transactions, then growth in China will be supercharged because now the Yuan will be internationalized. But if we look at America, their defense industry is still staying strong. They still hold the world reserve currency and business from Europe is still going to continue. America is still the big brother when it comes to the West and the EU has no choice. They have cut themselves away from Russian energy, right? And remember that the EU is also moving to reduce their dependency on China and this split is only going to grow. And that's why I'm diversifying into both American and Chinese stocks. I'm buying to both the S&P 500 and the Chinese ETF MCHI because over the next decade, both economies will still grow. Europe is getting hollowed out. They no longer have cheap energy and their industrial capacity is going to flow away to both China and America. Just take a look at this report. Europe is still the largest importer of solar panels from China. And this alone tells us how much of a manufacturing loss they have suffered. We can see Europe no longer has a trade surplus but a horrible trade deficit that got worse in 2022. So I expect Europe to fund the growth of both the Chinese and the American economies through increased trade. And that's why I am long both China and the United States. And as for gold, I'm still buying into it every month or two, right? I'm dollar cost averaging into all my positions. And if the market crashes, I'll be picking up some more gold as well. And I think going forward, we got to be prepared for a world of higher inflation and higher rates, right? And this is going to impact everything that we do. Things are going to get more expensive and hard assets will continue to climb, guys. So we got to invest to stay afloat. And remember that if inflation is at 6 to 7% and your investments grow by 6 to 7% a year, you are just treading water and keeping pace with inflation, but you still need to do it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you prepared for a China-US decoupling 
how are you investing? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.